Hello everyone and welcome to Owl by the Numbers. I am your host, Emily Drunk, and tonight is episode zero of this brand new fantasy Overwatch League podcast. Of course, from none other than Owl Network. So tonight we are basically going to be doing a brief overview of what you guys can expect from us as a Fantasy Overwatch League podcast, let you know where you can get involved with Fantasy Overwatch League, and we'll be introducing you not only to the segments that will be on the show, but also everyone that will be involved with this new passion project for all of us. So, just a quick introduction of who I am. My name is Emily Drunk, and I am an Overwatch content creator. I am the owner of Owl Network, which is an Overwatch podcast network, which features on basically everything and all things Overwatch, whether it is stuff within the game, competitive Overwatch, esports, the community, all of that good stuff. And then I also do uh, Heroes Never Die. We have Overwatch League Network, Overwatch Recall, there's just so much going on, and there's so much great content out there, and I'm basically here to help introduce people to new content that they can consume, and hopefully along the way, uh, you know, we can shed some light on maybe some of the smaller creators out there, and, you know, find them a core audience, which would be absolutely fantastic. So let me go ahead and introduce you to each of my co-hosts because this is going to be one of our larger podcasts on the network as we are four people deep so far. So first up, we have Blaze and Bob. And Bob, you know, you and I, uh, we've been Game Night Rivals. Uh, we've been on a couple of podcasts together. And, you know, like, we, we've met up IRL. We've had some pretty good times. You've literally dragged me out of BlizzCon, all of that good stuff. So why don't you let our listeners know who you are and what you currently do in regards to content creation for Overwatch. Hey, 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 Totem. Thank you for the introduction. Yes, we, uh, even though we've only collaborated a little bit on different podcasts, we talk regularly about strategy and you know, content creation and what's good, what's bad, and what we liked, what we didn't like. So we've always shared that relationship, and you're kind of a mentor to me also. But uh, about me, so I started Overwatch and just got super into it and then started podcasting in it. And I did a number of podcasts. I was on Watchpoint Radio. I did Prepare to Attack. I currently do the Al recap, and I'm excited to talk about Fantasy Overwatch because last year it was done very poorly, and this year I trust the I trust the people that are doing this new site at at high noon, and I'm excited to get into it for real. Absolutely. So I'll definitely update everyone on what the landscape of Fantasy Overwatch League is going to be in just a little bit because we do see a couple uh, of changes in regards to that aspect. But also joining me tonight is my co-host from Heroes Never Die, that being none other than Edinar, the hater of Canadians, uh, the person that helps balance out the 10 to 0 reviews for H&D. So Ed, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to our listeners. Uh, my name's Edna, like you said. Um, yes, I do dislike uh, a lot of things Canadian, but I also hate Tom Brady, so it <laughs> evens it out. Um, oh, yeah. See? See? I just, yeah, I found out some, some dirty little secrets about Totem and <laughs> what team he supports. I don't know if, I don't know if we can Shame. do a show anymore. Shame. 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 Um, <laughs> but I have been podcasting, I think, my first podcast, uh, in Overwatch was actually in the beta. I did the initiative, and that's how I got into podcasting. And then I took like a six, seven month break, and I came back to be the co host of Here's Never Die with Totem over here, um, starting on episode 100. I am insanely excited for, for fantasy Overwatch. Uh, I am what you would call a little bit of a fantasy sports um, nut. Let's say, like, I think... Guru. I, guru. I mean, I do everything from fantasy golf to fantasy baseball to fantasy basketball. I mean, obviously, numerous fantasy football leagues. And this is just going to be the one thing, one more thing. I'm like, oh, live and die fantasy. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm very excited to see this because it brings a different aspect to how you enjoy watching games. 
like you start cheering on teams you normally wouldn't cheer on because you're like, oh, I have, you know, I have Ark playing, you know, I have, you know, an AKM playing and he's on Genji and I'm going to lose, you know. So it's, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I'm, I'm just looking forward to broadening the horizon of fantasy so more people start watching more games, I guess. Right on. And, you know, the craziest thing is that I remember when you first started an initiative and, you know, there were times where I'm like, you know what, like, wait, whatever you need me, I'll be here. And then that's really like one of the first interactions that we had, because uh, at the mm-hmm. time you were a brand new content creator. And, you know, lo and behold, like you are a regular on H&D and uh, our friendship has just kind of evolved from that point. Uh, it really has. It's It's been crazy. Uh, but anyways, we do have a new addition to our podcast family across the board, and that is none other than Ramses. Uh, and, you know, Ramses, you are brand new into the podcast scene, uh, so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and maybe some of your history with Overwatch and, uh, you know, what kind of brought you into not only the podcast scene, but what made you a fan of the Overwatch League. For sure. Thank you, Totem. Hi, I'm Ramses, or my real name is Julian. I'm still trying to figure out, that's one of the growing pains about starting a, starting on a podcast, is trying to figure out if you're cool enough to actually use your battle tag, and I don't think I'm there yet, <laughs> but... <laughs> I would recommend thinking about it hard, because I wish I could change mine now. <laughs> my Nacho Libra commitment is just that much, Bob. <laughs> I, I mean, we can it. always just go with uh, Julian Gulian. Mm-hmm. I mean, I might that's get what I'm going to go with. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah, my name is Julian slash Ramsley's slash TBD, whatever, we'll see. Um, I've been playing Overwatch since about a week after launch. I've been very much into the game. Uh, I think around over 250 hours at least. Last time I checked, it's been a long time. Um, I take the, the shame, I hate to say it, I take the shame of being the lone um, console plebe. As part on this podcast and probably part of the network, unfortunately, but um, no, it, no, it is always good to have multiple uh, multiple views on the game. So I think that's great. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think that's bad at all, man. I mean, we need to talk to somebody who can explain to us how to get assist in aiming. <laughs> uh, I mean, my aim is bad. As somebody who has bad enough aim that it doesn't even help, I wish I could even tell you, but um. I've been playing since about a week after launch, um, put in a lot of hours, like I said. I've been really devoted to um, Overwatch League since I heard the announcement um, for World Cup, during World Cup 2017. Um, I also take the other shame of being an Outlaws apologist, because somebody has to answer for all of the screeching and bad fan art that comes out of it. So... Oh, I am... have another one? Oh, Bob, dude. you have like a Houston Outlaw fan on every show you do now. Oh God, oh, Jake. Li- I mean, Jake went to my cousin's high school, so I know a couple people. But it's like, well, okay, Jake's mom is one of the coolest people I've ever met in my entire life. I <laughs> talked to her for about forty-five minutes at BlizzCon twenty seventeen, and I was like, "That's why Jake's so cool." I totally get it now. You gotta rep SoCal, dude. That's what it is. <laughs> But I've been um, been very blessed to be able to just follow Overwatch League. I'm, I'm lucky enough to live pretty well in San Diego County, so being able to actually go and visit the arena about once or twice per stage, getting to watch the games live, uh, it's been a really awesome experience. And then now that we're starting to see stuff develop more, now that Fantasy Overwatch is becoming more developed and a lot more, I guess, complex but also playable, I'm really excited to kind of throw my hat in the ring and be able to contribute to what I think is going to be a great podcast. Absolutely. So moving on, let's talk about the current landscape of Fantasy Overwatch League. So in order to start with where we're at right now, let's first talk about really quickly what went down in the inaugural season. So in the inaugural season, there were basically two options. You had what was, uh, at the time, High Noon Pick'em, who are going to be the the primary Fantasy Overwatch League uh, format this year. So... They didn't have any sort of fantasy outside of just the pickems of it, which, you know, we uh, basically incorporated into our podcast week after week. And then, you know, it was constant trolling of uh, Spider being in third place, all of that good stuff. And then we had Winston's Lab, who at the time were really the first one to throw uh, their hat in the rain as the fantasy Overwatch League uh, 
really like the only site doing it at the time. And at the time, you know, it, it was good in the sense that Winston's Lab was already kind of the go-to in regards to grabbing statistics from competitive Overwatch games. The problem was they had uh, a couple of different changes to the actual scoring format throughout the season, and that agitated the heck out of a lot of people. Uh, I know... Bob, you and I were both in the league, Ed. Uh, I'm pretty sure you were you were trying it mm -hmm. too. And all of us were pretty much in agreement. Like, Winston's Lab, well, like, it, it was a, a first step. It, it was also a stumble uh, in that regard. So <laughs> to, to have High Noon basically <laughs> take the reins and be the primary league out there, uh, we all kind of have, like, higher expectations for where this is going to be. So this is the first time that they're branching out in the Fantasy Overwatch League. And uh, with that, it is important to note that they still are going to have their pick'em type leagues. So we're, you know, we're still going to do that. We're going to do a couple of other things. But Bob, you know, we, we have a couple of different options that High Noon is going to offer. So why don't you do like a quick overview uh, of exactly what they are going to provide the community this season? Okay. So first, first off, they're going to do the same thing that they did last year, which is the High Noon pickums which was super popular everybody loved it i mean it was a good time and they're adding on so now they're going to have what they call the standard league we don't know for sure the exact rules yet but i assume it's going to be what is it 12 I, I believe they said 12 people per league and at the time the last i checked they had like nine players Per team. Now that that okay. is subject to change, but that's what they're currently running with. All right, and then the next one is unlimited, which uh, kind of sounds like a DraftKings type of thing to me. It's uh, size of league is not limited. There's no draft. Players form a team, which would have with a team with whichever players they want. So I'm assuming that you'll be able to pick different players each week, just kind of like a DraftKings type of format. Yeah. Now, now the big thing here is we, we don't know whether or not there's going to be like any like pr uh, price in regards to the value of the players or anything like that. But it just seems like you can just pick whatever player you want. You can keep the same, same lineup every single week if you choose to do so. Uh, so, you know, there's still a little bit of unknown there, but that is going to be just another fantasy option for people out there. And to have a size uh, of a league that, you know, isn't limited is going to be fantastic because I remember last year when we did the high noon pick for Overwatch League Network, we had like 500 plus people looking to sign up. And sure, part of that was just due to uh, the over the top prizes that we were offering for it. Uh, but. You know, it, it definitely brought out a lot more competition across the board, so I'm excited to see what Unlimited is going to bring for us this season. Uh, but Ramses, you know, we have three options for uh, Fantasy Overwatch League, so what exactly is the OWL Network going to be offering uh, in regards to the formats? So we're going to be having leagues for all three options because we really just want to make sure we get no sleep at night any day of the week. So we'll be having a league <laughs> run by us in the network for at least for all three different options. And that way, every all the information we give you is both accurate and our predictions also are accurate based on which league you're going for. And that way, if you only have interest in one and not the other two or two out of the three, you don't not get serviced or fed the tips that you want to get from this podcast absolutely so it's, it's going to be interesting so we'll have to keep an eye on the scoring because uh who like the big performers are definitely going to be kind of tweaked around for unlimited so you know you might try to be right in whoever is hot at the moment and you know maybe neglecting some people that maybe aren't seeing a lot of substitutions and seeing play time all of that good stuff so definitely something to keep an eye on with that being said though ed you know Overwatch League Season 2 is, you know, a month away at this point. We got some pretty big plans for this podcast, and one of the things that we've been discussing is doing a live draft. So why don't you uh, give our listeners a rundown of what we plan on doing with that? Well, uh, yeah, like you said, we're going to be, uh, our plan right now is to do a live draft um, in the Standard League, not the Unlimited or the High Noon Pick'em, because that's just... 
that's just not as fun. So we want to get, you know, a group of 12 content creators. I mean, obviously the hosts of this show, uh, plus some other content creators on top of that. So we can do a, a 12 person league uh, and we can, you know, do a live draft some Friday, have everyone tune in. You can judge us while we, we do all our picks and then we can keep you up to date, you know, on like, and who's dominating, AKA me. Um, <laughs> And not Bob. My goal this year I, I, I is to beat Bob. I will consider Bob, a do something. Yeah, Bob, do something. Get out of last place. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Most already of my leagues in. last year, or at least got second. Yeah, but I wasn't in those leagues, so you know, true. it's it's it's, it's a tainted. It's tainted. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, I completely plan on setting up a live draft for us and the content creators, and then we'll stream it. Probably across a couple of Twitch channels, definitely for sure the Overwatch League Network channel, which will be the primary one. And yeah, it's just going to be a blast. We might even get a whiteboard, like I'll, I'll put a little draft board behind me, mm-hmm. and then and then chaos will ensue. So yeah, uh, we will keep you up to date on that on future shows, to let you know who's in it, who you can cheer for, who you can cheer against. Uh, just remember, no one from Canada should be cheered for. <laughs> totem totem should Blame never be Canada. cheered for mm-hmm. yeah Blame totem Canada. should never be cheered for because he likes tom brady <laughs> um you know bob's bob like you, you don't you don't cheer for bob like that just doesn't happen you know Ramsey's i i can't talk too much trash <laughs> about you yet but i will i'll take i'll take my come. moment <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i'll yeah, appreciate no, no. it while i can yeah yeah, yeah no, no. enjoy the I'll, moment while i'll give plays. you a week by episode one there, there will be trash talk. So, uh, yeah, uh, you have that to look forward to. Uh, and with, with that being said, though, I, I do want to make a, a quick note on that. Dependent on how many content creators we're in touch with or are interested in doing this, this might be something that expands throughout more than one league. So who knows? We might have a couple of different live dress that will be streamed. Uh, but for now, we are just planning on doing the one. But either way, when it comes to the standard type leagues, you can expect a number of Owl Network ones just because there is limitations to the size of the leagues themselves since they are limited to 12 players uh, or 12, 12 users as a whole. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll have like a link overview of everything that's going on, like what spots are open, what's available. And, you know, if there's enough interest, you know, there's always the option to create yet another league really at any time. So definitely something to keep note of. With, with that being said, though, let's quickly go over what the format of this podcast is going to be. So Ramsey's, you know, every week we have matches Thursday through Sunday. We're planning on recording every single week at Tuesday, so these episodes are hidden on Wednesday. So why don't you start from the top? What are we looking at diving into first on the podcast? All right, so every week we're going to go into, we're going to recap all the games that happened the previous week. We're going to go into the wins. We're going to go into the losses. We're going to highlight the fantastic successes and amazing performances of some of our great athletes. And then we're, of course, going to highlight the disappointments and the failures of the ones that let us down and cause our team to lose every week. Dallas. And. <laughs> Oh, I'm already prepared. Burn blue, baby. But Burn blue. we'll be going through. We'll be we'll be recapping all the games each week and really just highlighting, you know, what, the players that we found really interesting, the performances we'd want to keep an eye on, what we really took from the week's last the week's games. Absolutely. So each week there are always going to be certain aspects that we're kind of looking at in regards to the point system and who's doing what. So Ed, you know, there's definitely going to be times where we're going to see a lot of fluctuation. So there's one thing in particular that we are going to be keeping an eye on more so than some of these other aspects of fantasy. And this is something that isn't new to fantasy sports at all. Everyone does it with fantasy football. Uh, So we got to keep an eye on the wafer. So each week, what should we be looking at in regards to these pickups or drops? Yeah, I mean, we're going to obviously be doing the waiver report. So we're going to tell you uh, who, like, who's getting benched, who's up and coming, who's going to be a sleeper that is probably still out there in your league. Because, um, you know, everyone always pick. You, the rule in fantasy is you don't win with the first pick in the draft. You win, it generally comes down to who has the best free agent pickups. Every year there's those two, three free agent pickups that just dominate your league and put you over the top. Like last year, 
nobody really thought Jonak was going to be, you know, Jonak. And, you know, he would have been like an ideal free agent pickup. So that's the kind of stuff we're going to go over. But we're also going to go over the ones that you should probably drop because, you know what, they're just not living up to the hype. And they're just not living up to the fantasy aspect of everything. So that's what we'll go over every week to, to, to tell you who to add, who to drop, and all that fun stuff. Which will lead into our vouch or slouch segment, which is basically going to be highlighting bad player performances. Now, we're probably going to try to focus on maybe some bigger name players in the league, and it's going to be more of an analytical breakdown of the play that we're seeing from them, and letting you know whether or not it is time that you need to stick with them as a player, or, you know, release and set them free in hopes of finding something better on the waiver wire. So, uh, you know... There's going to be some weeks where, you know, we might have some scoring anomalies, other weeks where just not much is going on with some key players. Uh, but we'll, we'll have to see how that kind of evolves. So that will lead into our Player of the Week, which I see Bob is asking about. So, Bob, uh, each week, this is what we're going to be doing, is uh, we're going to basically be highlighting a certain individual, or uh, maybe it will be each host, and we'll talk about who impressed us the most. So, ah, so it's so it's whoever played amazing the week prior. Then, yes. Okay, cool. So, when it comes to the player of the week, are there any sort of criteria that you're going to be looking at to you know make your pick? Whoever made the most points, man, <laughs> or or really, if I mean, if they outshined and they did better than we nor we normally had saw like something i could think of is stage four mickey making the transition to brigitte mm-hmm. i is, i'm pretty sure he would have had monster points since he barely died they changed so that that would be a type of player of the week type thing him using his shield to look around walls things of that nature just the intangibles poss- like possibly rather than actually if they had the most points. Yeah, and that's definitely going to be something that we're going to be highlighting every single week. And, you know, there might be times where just one player in particular just takes control week after week. Like, there have been times where, you know, a DPS player like EQO has just had such a strong presence. Or Jonek, you know, just makes everyone uh, curl up into a ball <laughs> with the pressure that he has with the Discord orb and all of that. So we'll definitely I see be, what you did there. be keeping an eye on that. Uh, and, you know, because we are going to be focusing on uh, multiple aspects of fantasy, which includes, you know, high noon pick em, that also means that each week we are going to be highlighting some of the marquee matches of the week. And we will be discussing who we feel like is going to be winning these games. And, you know, we'll do a little bit of analytical stuff with that. So... It's not going to be something that we're going to be, like, jumping in at, like, 10, 15 games or anything ridiculous each and every week. But, you know, it might be anywhere from, like, 2 to 5 at the high end, I would imagine, uh, for that particular segment. And then that is basically going to lead into uh, a little bit more of an interactive interactive segment because we are going to be streaming using Beat Live. And what's going to be awesome about this is... Uh, the chat interaction can be immediately, like, brought up on the screen, and that will kind of segue into our, like, community-type segment. So, Ed, why don't you go ahead and introduce what exactly the mailbag segment is going to be? Well, the mailbag thing is going to basically be, you're going to ask us, the, one of the most common things people write into fantasy shows and ask fantasy experts are, should I start this person or this person? Should I trade this person for this person? So on and so forth. Those are the kind of questions that we expect to get. Like, you know, we can help answer your questions like this. So it's going to be a lot of the, you ask the questions to us, and then we'll give you our expert opinion on what you should do, most likely do. Um, and it's, it's just going to be like that. You can obviously, like Totem said, uh, reach out to us live while we're on you know, be live on Twitch and stuff like that, but you can also reach us in Discord, the, reach us on Twitter, just ask questions, we'll keep them for the week, you know, and we'll answer any and all questions that we get. So that's basically, like, all the planned segments. Uh, there, There's always the opportunity that we could expand a little bit further uh, and do maybe some more deep dives on our YouTube side of things. We'll kind of figure that out as time goes on, but each week we're expecting to be recorded around an hour 
Uh, you know, there might be some weeks where we go under, maybe a little bit over, but we're going to try to keep it at that hour mark. Uh, I'm just... going a few more with a little bit more over than a little under. <laughs> and just you're throwing that out you're, there. You're only saying that because you and Bob are both on the podcast. Oh, yep. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, let's go ahead. Let's close out the show for tonight. So, Bob, there are, you know, a lot of things that we do with the network. And one of the ways to find content out there for Overwatch, really anything Overwatch related, is with Overwatch Recall. So what exactly does that provide the community? Well, Toto, I'm glad you asked about Overwatch Recall. It's one of my favorite shows. You can find a listing of several Overwatch, Overwatch League, and Path to Pro Pro... Yeah, podcasts over <laughs> on our website at owlnshow.com slash Al Recall. Episodic listings are released every Sunday night. To keep up to date with the podcast scene, follow Overwatch Recall on Twitter at OW Recall. All right, and Ed, you know, our network has been growing. We have a number of shows. we got a lot of ways to get in contact with us. Why don't you let our listeners know how they can get a hold of us? All right, well, I've got this down to science now because I've done it for about 50 straight episodes. So you can reach <laughs> us through email at contact at OWLN show. Uh, you can reach us on our website, and our website is OWLNshow.com. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Overwatch League Network. Uh, come over there, join us, subscribe, all that fun jazz. Uh, you can reach us and talk to us on Discord. We are on discord.me slash OWLN show. Uh, we are sh- will be streaming the show live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash OWLN show. We are a Twitch affiliate, so help support the show by subscribing to our channel and earn our network emoticon, our pet... Uh, Our podcast network streams regularly, probably four or five times a week. Uh, Just remember, you Amazon Prime members, you can subscribe for free. Just throwing that out there. Uh, We do a a show, Overwatch League Network, airs Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific. OWL by the numbers. This show will be airing Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific. Heroes Never Die, the show me and Totem do, uh, which is more variety Overwatch, airs Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, and then we generally will have host streams on Thursdays and Fridays at 7.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, Totem and Spider will do that. And then we also have ourselves a Patreon that we recently launched at patreon.com slash OWLN network. So we recently launched our network's Patreon page for those that want to support our Overwatch network even further. Tier starter just $1 a month. Any help would be phenomenal. I mean, no pressure to do so, but any help is very much appreciated. Do it. Do Do it. it. And and Ed won't even care if you're Canadian. You know, any support is a good support. Well, the thing is... (laughs) So here's the thing. Well, just, okay, just just to let everybody know, I love Canada, so (laughs) we now equal out. Yeah. So, wait, isn't the Canadian dollar more than the the American dollar? So really... Canadians would give us more money. I would be very appreciative of that. <laughs> like, I'm using economics to get on Canada's side here. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like it. Uh, I'm a well, smart and, person. Yes. Well, anyways, we do have four people here. So why don't we go ahead and go over social media really quick. So, Bob, how can our listeners get a hold of you, whether it is Twitter, Twitch, you know, YouTube, all of that good stuff? Well, you can find me on Twitter at blazon underscore bob that's b-l-a-z-z-i-n underscore b-o-b everything i do is there sounds good and edinar what about you uh for me you can reach me on twitter at edinar overwatch so e-d-a-n-a-r overwatch uh, i also stream from time to time on twitch.tv slash edinar o-w um stream overwatch hearthstone destiny 2 all that fun stuff so yeah Sounds good. And our newest edition, Ramses, how can our listeners get a hold of you? All my socials are currently at Q-U-E-Z underscore Julian. And that's it for now. I don't really have anything else. I don't have any, not a Twitch streamer yet, so still working on some stuff. But as of now, yeah, just Q-U-E-Z underscore Julian. Sounds good. And as for myself, you can find Totally Drunk on Twitter at Totally Drunk CTR. And if I am live on Twitch, it will always be on the OWL Network Twitch at twitch.tv slash O-W-L-N show. 
Well, guys, with that being said, again, thank you so much for listening to our inaugural episode. Well, really, episode zero. I don't know if I should say inaugural because it's not one. Whatever. That's besides the point. This has been <laughs> Owl by the Numbers, and we will see you guys back next Tuesday as we dive a little bit deeper into some of the Fantasy Overwatch League formats. Uh, and who knows, maybe we might even be able to get a hold of Matt for that one, uh, as he is the creator of that. But for now, have a good night. Have a good one. Have a good one. Hashtag it's fantasy time.